Today's second speaker, Bob Martin, is the immediate past president of the American Rose Society. His program, The Beauty of Striped Roses, was privately premiered for the Sierra Foothill Rose Society on August 29, 2021. Bob has signed a speaker consent form for the Sierra Foothill Rose Society. Before we get into our next speaker, I get a little story. His name is Bob Martin. He's immediate past president of the American Rose Society. We uh, first approached Bob about coming on and giving a program. Well, we found out that he was involved in another event with the American Rose Society that weekend. I sent Bob an email. Hey, uh, you know, we can videotape you on Zoom and we'll play it back. And no response from Bob. And I sent another email. Still no response. Finally, there was this long email that I got back from Bob. And to put it in story that short portion of the story, uh, Bob loves the interpersonal relationship with uh, his audience. He loves, if he tells a joke, people will laugh. He loves that. People clap when he's talking. They cheer. Uh, and things like that. And I said, Bob, that's not an issue. If you want that, you missed that, I will make it happen. We will videotape you on Zoom. I will have the Sierra Foothill Rose Society's board of directors online, and you know they'll clap, do a Q and A, and uh, if you tell a joke, they'll laugh at your joke. But I also said, Bob, uh, by the way, if somebody gets online and heckles you, I'm not responsible. <laughs> so, without further ado. Mr. Bob Martin, immediate past president of the American Rose Society, will be given a program on the beauty of striped roses. All right, Bob, it's all yours. Unmute. Oh, and by the way, if somebody heckles you while you're giving your program, I'm not responsible. There we go. Well, it's a place to be here this evening. Uh, my subject this evening is striped roses. I wanted to say uh, in, in advance that this is actually not a new subject of interest to me. Uh, there has been, of course, a great increase in interest in striped roses, uh, which led me to put together the program. But when I first came online, 24 years ago, one of the first things I did was to put together a, a, a database of striped roses, which actually was on the old fact of the uh, Rack Garden Roses. And we used to discuss striped roses at the time, and I said that I was a sucker for stripes. And that has continued. And with the greatly increased interest in striped roses these days, I thought it'd be appropriate to finally put together a program about striped roses. So talk about, first of all, the origins of striped roses, and a good place to start is where they're not. I get this question from time to time. Several clients ask me about these rainbow roses. Are these striped roses? Are they real roses? And the answer is yes, well, they're real roses, except uh, that they do not appear that way naturally. This rainbow rose was developed by an uh, owner of a Dutch flower company, and uh, they use dyes, and he has patented a number of special techniques where they can stick roses into various dyes, and as the result is you get various colors on each of the petals, and uh, it's quite an interesting process and uh, apparently commercially successful. But these are, of course, not striped roses. We're talking tonight about striped roses that occur naturally. And the oldest known striped rose, Rosa Gallica versicolor, known before 1581, which in England is known as Rosa Mundi, a uh, name for Rosamund Clifford, the mistress of Henry II. Over the centuries, this rose has inspired artists, including Redite, who painted it at Malmaison, where it was known as Rose de France Pache. As you can see, this has been known since 1581, so striped roses are not new. But where do they come from? Well, the three natural possibilities have been advanced, one of which is virus, 
The second are through sports and mutations. And the third is through breeding and sexual propagations. Here is, for example, an old Gallica from 1826, Camel, uh, attributed originally to Viber, raised by an amateur from Anjou by the name of Gendron, circa 1826. Uh, nobody actually knows where this rose came from. Let's talk about virus first. There's a very large number of viruses that affect flowers and ornamental plants. And viruses of ornamental plants have very different host ranges, many of them being ubiquitous, such as the necrotic spot virus, which we also know occurs in roses. Others are specialized and infect only certain species or genera of plants. There's an example of a virus lily and a virus camellia. Probably the best known of the virus plants or flowers is the tulip, tulip breaking virus, a frequently encountered virus in tulips. It affects the color breaking of flowers, producing bars, stripes, streaks, featherings, flames, different colors on the petals. The modeling or striping of the leaves also occurs. You may have read in your history books of the tulip mania in the 17th century. Tulip mania is a matter of fact, which led to wild speculations with astronomical prices for one variegated tulip bulb. At that time, the undesirable viral cause of the spectacular flower breaking was not actually known. It's now known that the infection causes loss of vigor and poor flower production. And in many areas, it is actually illegal to propagate in uh, virus uh, tulips. There's a drawing before 1640 of the Semper Augustus tulip. It was the most expensive tulip sold during tulip mania. So how about roses? Well, we know that we have various viruses of roses, such as rose mosaic virus, which are typically uh, represented in the leaves, although not always uh, stripes in the leaves or come from a virus. Here's an interesting uh, Floribunda, introduced in 2007, 2007 by George Del Bard. You notice the uh, model of leaves, and you would think that that's virus. However, that that was proper. That was that was uh, bred that way. That's uh, that's the breeding that is not caused by a virus. So, what about virus and roses in terms of the flowers? Ralph Moore wrote an article in 1985 American Rose Annual called "Striped Roses Are Here." And in it, he said, many of the old striped or variegated roses, including all or nearly all the striped gallicas, are striped because of certain rose viruses. This should not seem unusual as the striped tulips and nearly all the striped camellias are also caused by virus. Evidence of the viral origin of the old gallicas and certain other striped roses came about when some of these varieties were given heat treatment to eliminate certain other suspected viruses. After such treatment, the virus-free plants had lost their stripes. Thus, the striping was not an inheritable genetic trait. Hmm. Ralph Moore's description of roses that are caused by virus, particularly the striped gallicas, is a difficult one to address because no one else has ever said this. If you look through the rose literature, other than those who quoted Ralph Moore, uh, you could find actually no reference to what striped gallicas at all he was talking about. As a matter of fact, I discussed this very subject with Dr. Malcolm Manners of Florida Southern University, who pioneered in the use of heat treatment for treatment of virus. And he said that he is absolutely unaware of any example of a uh, gallica being heat treated and losing its stripes. And he, in fact, checked with the University of California at Davis, which also maintains uh, the facilities for heat treating roses, and they have no record or evidence that in fact this ever occurred. We don't know what striped gallicas Ralph was talking about, and we do not know actually uh, whether or not <laughs> what he said is true. Paul Barden addressing this said this, consider this, <clears throat> heat treatment to remove viruses supposedly also eliminates striping in old cultivars. How then do we explain the fact that Rosa Monday regularly sports back to Rosa Gallica officinalis, the stripless pink Gallica? I can't imagine that some parts of the plant suddenly clean themselves up. The averted parts of the plant appear to be stable, solid colored plants after that. This throws a wrench into the virus theory, in my opinion. Hmm. What's an opinion I share with uh, Ralph? 
you can take a look at Rosa Gallica Versicolor or Rosa Monday, which is a sport of Rosa Gallica officinalis, also known as the apothecary rose, which is known before 1160. William R. Prince, the author of the classic 1846 work, Manual of Roses, noted that it often loses its stripes entirely and returns to its parent. And this, in fact, occurs. And so the idea that somehow this was caused by a virus is very, very unlikely. And so lacking any specific examples of roses that are striped because of virus, I have to put that theory down as unsupported. So what is supported? We do know, of course, as I've just mentioned, Rosa Monday is a sport of the apothecary rose. We have a number of examples of uh, older sports. Here, for example, is a sport of Papi Gontier called Rainbow. And I mention it because of this excellent book that Daryl Schramm has published on a history of the rose in California, which he put Rainbow on the color cover. In fact, it was the first commercially sold rose in California. And Daryl tells a fascinating story. I recommend this book. Here's Vix Caprice, a climbing tea rose from 1889, sport of arts duchesse Elizabeth de Altruche. It's one that I grew. In fact, I should mention here that about 80% of the roses that I'm uh, picturing here, although it looks like I have a very complete collection, but mostly these are roses that uh, we have grown in our garden or I have grown in gardens past. They include, for example, Madame Triou, a climbing tea rose from 1902 which is a sport of Ren Marie Henriette. This is a very tall climbing rose. And we have this on a obelisk right in the middle of a striped garden that I will illustrate to you later. Here's Honorine de Brabant, a bourbon from 1916, which is a sport of Commandant Beaupreur. So we see many examples of various types of roses that are produced through simply our sports. And exactly what is a sport? Well, Dr. Malcolm has explained this to, Dr. Malcolm Manis has explained this to me. He uses the term hopping genes. I kind of like the term uh, transposons. <coughs> These are DNA that can move around to different positions within the genome of a cell in a process that cause mutations. He's called them jumping genes and hopping genes, which I find amusing. And I think of this in the context of a conga line. Here's a, uh, Here's Carmen Miranda in front of the condom with a line. And if you figure that as a line of DNA, uh, that would produce one rose. And if she got out of that and got in the middle, you'd have something different. And I, I view that as pretty much how the transposons work. Here's an interesting example of a rose that is in commerce these days, which will illustrate uh, how, how unstable a rose, in fact, can be. This is a rose introduced in 1986 by Reimer Cortes called Frisco. As you can see, a nice bright yellow rose, florist rose that uh, was widely distributed. Well, it's sported. Here's a sport of Frisco called Safari, introduced by Cortes in 2007. And you can see now, instead of a bright yellow, it's more of a apricot. Or well, now we have it tending toward the deeper apricot called Christine, another sport of Frisco. Or another sport of Frisco. Here's Rodeo. This one goes back to 1995. And as you can see, this is a red sport, fire engine red. But how about a darker red sport called Amore? A sport of Frisco introduced also by Cortes in the year unknown. Or Black Beauty, which is almost indistinguishable from Amore. A Floribunda introduced by Cortes in 1998. Also a sport of Frisco. And now let's get crazy. A sport of Black Beauty called Hocus Pocus. Magically changed. So now we have a striped rose where you can see the dark red of the Black Beauty and the yellow going back to Frisco. Or how about Abracadabra, magically changing again, a sport of hocus pocus. Very difficult to distinguish, I might add. Or how about the yellow with the red? This is Sim Salabum, introduced by Cortis in 2002. Also a sport of hocus pocus.
Here's Phidibus, a Florabunda issued and released in 2002 by Cordus, which is a sport of Frisco. Here's the fire engine red with the yellow marks. Now let's move to the US. We have a rose called Memphis Magic, introduced in 2004 by Whit Wells as a mini flora. He reported its breeding as an unnamed seedling by Black Magic, but is it really an unnamed seedling by Black Magic? There are many who find it indistinguishable from the old rose Black Beauty. And Memphis Magic, of course, does this. It's sported to a rose called Memphis Music. Is Memphis Music distinguishable? Is it the same rose as Abracadabra? Or how about this for Memphis Music? So sometimes the, instead of you get the stripes, you get it split. Here's one that was shown at a rose show by Linda Clark several years ago. Or how about this one? Here's Memphis Music shown floating in a bowl by Kitty Belendis in 2006 at our district show. As you can see here, this board is exactly half of one color and the other half of the other color. I remember when this was introduced and was, was put into the row show and I looked at it at the time and I said, you know, hmm, you're a judge. Uh, how, how do you evaluate something like that? Is that really Memphis Music? Is that quote typical of the variety? What exactly is typical of this variety? Because the variety is typically atypical. I fact, wound up writing an entire article about that, and it's certainly interesting to think about, but when you realize what goes on with sport, it's not unusual in other plants as well. How about this little apple that I found a picture of online? Here, the apple is exactly split right down the middle, just like the rose was that I showed in the previous picture. And then, of course, we have the rose that I introduced, Alakazam. Alakazam is a sport of hocus pocus. Came off of a bush that I grew of hocus pocus. What's the difference between this and Sim Salabim? Well, for years, we tried to get the American Rose Society Registration Committee to re-register Sim Salabim as a mini flora because it's quite clearly not a floribunda. And they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't change it. So I submitted this as a mini flora, and I got an email back saying, Bob, what's the difference between Alakazam and Simsalabim? And I wrote back and I said, Alakazam is a mini flora, and Simsalabim is a floribundo. And that's the difference. Or here's another one from our garden. This is Alakazam, as you can see, an example of it being half and half. Typical, who knows? We have other sports that are fairly common in commerce these days. Here's an excellent hybrid tea called Red Intuition by the Del Bard firm issued in 1999, which is a sport of Belle Rouge, or Pink Intuition, which is a sport of Red Intuition. This is a fairly recent one that I've ordered from Jim Mills at K&M. This is a sport of Elizabeth Taylor that's called Lauren Lee. Those of you who have grown Elizabeth Taylor in the past know, particularly if you've tried to show the rose, that it is noted for having a petal that has a white color fault in it. Now, here's the white color fault taken to extreme. The entire rose appears to be full of white color faults, producing a striped rose, the sport of Elizabeth Taylor. So let's leave sports for a little bit because, you know, sports just happen and we can discover them, but the question is, how can we produce striped roses that can be made available for sale? And that takes us into rose breeding. And of course, if you're going to breed with roses, I always like this cartoon here. We've got the cat in the reception area and the announcement of it's kittens. <laughs> breeding of striped roses goes back to Ralph Moore. And in fact, that very article I mentioned to you where he introduced the striped roses that he had been working on. <clears throat> He began a serious line of research into striping and roses, introduced the first popular striped miniature rose, Stars and Stripes, in 1976. Stars and Stripes is a cross of the miniature rose Little Chief by an unintroduced seedling known only as Number 14 Stripe. Number 14 Stripe was a cross of Little Darling, a floribunda that Ralph used extensively in his breeding, and an old tea rose named Ferdinand Pichard. 
1985, Moore introduced Pinstripe across the 1940 Floribunda Pinocchio by another unintroduced ceiling known as number 33 stripe. Both 19, number 14 stripe and number 33 stripe are descended from the 1921 hybrid perpetual. I said T a moment ago, but that's a mistake. It's a hybrid perpetual Ferdinand Pichard bred by Rame Tan of France from unknown parentage. And here it is. This is the, this is the father of virtually all the striped roses. The father, the grandfather, the great grandfather. You will find this rose in the reported breeding of nearly every modern striped rose, Ferdinand Pichard. Breeding of it is unknown. Is it a naturally occurring that way? Uh, is it a sport? We don't know, but it has the ability of passing those genes on so that its descendants are very much striped. So let's look at Ralph Moore's striped roses. Here he took Golden Angel and Dortmund and he crossed it with number 33 stripe. And you'll see, as I'm hopping through all of this stuff, earthquake. And then there's a little tiger, Golden Angel by Pinstripe. Take a look at Pinstripe and make a note of that in your mind because Pinstripe clearly comes from Ferdinand Pichard and Pinstripe is in the breeding of a very substantial number of roses. Here, for example, is Charlie Brown that Ralph Moore introduced in 1996. Here he took any time and gold badge and crossed it with Pinstripe and produced this beautiful red blend stripe. He has Strawberry Swirl. Ralph is also known for his work in miniature moss roses, where they have the mossing around the uh, calyx of the uh, rose. And here he combined his mossing with uh, stripes. So he has Little Darling by number 33 stripe. Painter's Palette, another Little Darling by number 33 stripe, producing another mossed rose. He took Dortmund, 1987, introduced it as Rose Gillardi, named after your former district director and champion of miniature roses. Secret Recipe is Dortmund again by number 33 stripe. Here's a miniature moss that Ralph introduced in 1984. Double Treat, another miniature mix, a yellow blend. Look at the complex breeding with Arizona. You see the moss roses he puts in here and Ferdinand Pichard, directly from Ferdinand Pichard. Twister, here's a little darling by Yellow Magic and Shadow Dancer, a miniature climbing rose from 1997. Following the introduction of Stars and Stripes in 1976, Sam McGreedy, Sam McGreedy IV undertook breeding stripe roses in New Zealand. Ralph told Sam he never could get pollen from stars and stripes, and neither could Sam, except for one year when for some reason he got loads of it. The resulting seedlings included an important one that is called Roller Coaster. Here's Roller Coaster. It's one of my really favorite stripes that I've grown for years. Introduced in 1987, you'll see he had stars and stripes that he used to produce Roller Coaster. It was originally named Mac Minmo, that Mac for McGreedy is his code letters. He was going to call it Minnie Mouse, but I was unable to get uh, permission of Walt Disney or Disney to do that. So uh, it became Roller Coaster. You know, he actually had several roses named after the Disney character. Here's one that was not actually introduced called Donald Duck which is superseded by Stars and Stripes. <clears throat> he crossed New Year with Donald Duck and came up with Pandemonium, a miniature. Hurdy Gurdy. This is a pretty vigorous growing miniature. Matangi by Stars and Stripes. It originally introduced as Mac Pluto. It was going to be called Pluto after the dog and the Disney characters and wound up being called Hurdy Gurdy. Going on to larger roses, Sam McGreedy introduced the Floribunda oranges and lemons. 
here is New Year by Umbrella, which is bed from Stars and Stripes. So again, this is just all from Stars and Stripes. Uh, Ralph Moore's originally original striped rose. And you get these beautiful oranges and lemons. I love this rose. Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. Here is a, <coughs> a rose that Sam introduced in 1994. It's not well known here in the U.S., You'll notice that uh, coloration is very similar to Frida Kahlo, which you will see here later on. It's a gorgeous rose and ought to have a wider distribution. Sam introduced Tropical Sunlight, also known as Rainbow Niagara. This is a fourth generation descendant of Stars and Stripes, and this is generally available through Palatine Roses, which also makes available Philately, Philately a hybrid tea from 1999. You'll see it's also a fourth generation descendant of Stars and Stripes. That Stars and Stripes pushes its stripes all the way through its descendants. The pioneering work of Ralph Moore and Stripe Miniatures influenced Jack Christensen, who was then the rose hybridizer at Armstrong Nursery, which was subsequently acquired by Jackson and Perkins. In 1988, Jack Christensen introduced Peppermint Twist, a pink and white stripe for a bundle bred from across Ralph Moore's pinstripe and the Sam McGreedy hand painted hybrid tea maestro. So we have pure pinstripe and a large rose peppermint twist. And he also introduced Purple Tiger in 1991. Here is a cross of intrigue, purple rose of some renown, crossed again with pinstripe, which passed through its stripes. And Tiger Tail. Matangi by Pinstripe. One of my favorite entries in a rose show many years ago at the Pacific Rose Society. The Pacific Rose Society at then and still does have a class that called for three floor bundle sprays. It could be each of the same variety of different varieties. And my entry consisted of one of peppermint twist, a spray, a spray of purple tiger, and a spray of tiger tail. Wow. I'm holding it out at the preparation area to my mentor and saying, what do you think of that? And he shielded his eyes from it. We put it in the show and it definitely attracted attention and wound up winning. We turn to Del Bard. George Del Bard was born in 1906 in Malicorne, Allier, a small village located in the center of France. 1942, he started the production of fruit trees at his family farm in Malicorn. And later, 1945, he added roses, dahlias, and other flowers to his breeding work. He then made way for his three sons. Francois, the eldest, joined the company in 1968. In 1972, Henry took charge, Henri took charge of the Malicorn nurseries. 1977, Guy Delbard, born July 3rd, 1947, the third and youngest son, became the breeder of Delbard roses. In 2012, Arnaud Delbard, the grandson, acquired and runs the Pepiniers et Rosere Georges Delbard, which is the firm that now exists. Henri Delbard published a delightful book in 1996 called Diary of a Rose Lover. There is a picture that I took of it sitting on my shelf behind me. In it, he describes one of the most wonderful experiences of his life that occurred in 1986 when he encountered a number of striped roses being produced by a rose nursery. That was the nursery of Armstrong Roses that was then in production of the striped roses of Jack Christensen. Inspired by the striped roses of Jack Christensen, Delbard undertook a program that led to the introduction of an entire series of roses often referred to as painter's roses. The first was the rose Claude Monet, a striped rose bred by Jack Christensen himself sometime before 1992. Its breeding is undisclosed, however, its connection to Christensen's peppermint twist cannot be doubted, as well as its ultimate connection to Ralph Moore's pinstripe. Here's Claude Monet, Jack Christensen's Flora Bunda from 1992. In 1990, Guy Delbard introduced Rose called Grimaldi. This is named after the uh, House of Grimaldi, which is uh, the Royal House of Monaco, going back to, you know, called Princess Grace and so on. That, uh, that's the House of Grimaldi, and it was to honor that house that they issued this striped rose. 
Delbar has not been particularly forthcoming in explaining its breeding, but there is no question that uh, it was influenced greatly by the Jack Christensen roses and that uh, pinstripe is, is behind virtually all of them. Here's Paul Cezanne, a floor bunder from 1992. Here's one in which the breeding was disclosed, Henri Matisse, floor bunder from 1993, a red and white stripe, as you can see. And you see this arrow right here, that's an Armstrong rose, which is a striped rose. Camille Pissarro, introduced in 1996. This was the photo that was on the cover of the American Rose magazine, where I ran an article on the Del Bard roses taken by 10-year-old Kira Kazemchak, a spectacular, spectacular photograph. I should mention that it looks to, you know, some, some will say, gee, the, aren't, aren't these just recent roses? Well, in a sense, they are. I mean, they were introduced in 1996, but they didn't have a wide distribution at the time. However, more recently, uh, Certified Roses has reintroduced a substantial number of the painter's roses in the U.S. So they've shown up in their catalogs, and people are seeing these roses for the first time, even though they've been around for 20-some-odd years. Here's Edgar Degas. This is a sport of Henri Matisse, so that even the roses that have been bred, for, like, for example, for Pinstripe, have decided in time to time to create their own spores. Here's Alfred Sisley, a shrub. That was one of the curious things about the certified road. I'm not sure exactly how they started, but a number of their roses have been introduced, the painter's roses, as shrubs instead of floribundas. They're all floribundas, there's no question about that. But uh, nowadays, breeders often want to call roses shrubs in order to attract those who are looking for uh, landscape quality roses as opposed to floribundas, which I mean, the original landscape rose. Here's Guy Savoy, shrub from Red Blend, 2001 by Guy Devard. Maurice Utrio, you'll notice a number of these photos are by me because we have most of these roses in our garden. I love this rose. Look at the coloration of it, the Red Blend from 2004. Or Paul Gauguin, another one introduced as a shrub. It's interesting to note here that they've gone and actually reused the name there was a Jack Christensen Red Blend Striped Hybrid Tea released in 1992 by the name of Paul Gauguin. And then 19, in 2006, they introduced another rose with the same name. Mark Chagall. This is a very interesting rose. You'll notice the wonderful uh, decorative form of it. Uh, and it's the pink with the creamy type stripes to it. Much of the modern work at Striped Roses can be credited to Tom Carruth who's now the curator of the Rose Collection at the Huntington Library, Art Museum, Botanical Gardens in San Marino. Tom's a native of Texas who grew up in a Texas panhandle, later received a bachelor's degree in horticulture and a master's in plant breeding from Texas A&M. Active in rose breeding since 1975, Tom retired in 2012. Prior to that, he was for 25 years in charge of breeding for Weeks Roses as its director of research and marketing. And during those years, he introduced more than 100 rose varieties, including 11 All-American Rose Selection winners. He spent his early days working with Jack Christensen, so it's not surprising that he would use peppermint twist in his own breeding. Crossing that with the pollen parent Playboy, Tom came up with Sentimental, a red blend floribunda with red and white stripes introduced by Weeks in 1997. In addition to the stripes, Sentimental presents the added bonus of a strong damask rose fragrance. Here's Tom's best rose, according to Tom's opinion. Fourth of July, large climber introduced. And here you see he's got Altissimo. He crossed Altissimo with Sam McGreedy's roller coaster, the miniature rose that I showed you earlier in the program about. What's interesting is I actually made the same cross myself. I crossed Altissimo with roller coaster, or well, and Tom crossed it. He got Fourth of July. I got this little bitty thing called that I named after my former mother-in-law Ilona. Uh, in fact, this rose has since passed on in existence, and all I have is the photograph. But it's kind of interesting where you make exactly the same cross, 
the result were striped roses in either case, but one was a huge climber and the other was a small miniature rose. Another one introduced by Tom Carruth, this is Calico by Roller Coaster, again using Sam McGrady's Roller Coaster. He came up with this beautiful striped rose. Rosy Outlook, also by Tom Carruth, the large climber produced from Tournament of Roses, again by Roller Coaster. Using sentimental in his breeding, he came up with City of Carlsbad, introduced in 2000. And his climber Candyland, nice pink and cream climber. This is Rosy Outlook by Pretty Lady. And using Fourth of July to carry on his breedings, he came up with Soaring Spirits, large climber introduced in 2004. And Purple Splash, basically the purple version of Fourth of July, Soaring Spirits by Rhapsody in Blue. Here is a Grandiflora that Tom introduced. Here we have George Burns being used in his breeding by New Zealand. Or his most recent one, the magnificent Neil Diamond, winner of numerous fragrance awards, incredibly fragrant rose and a beautiful rose, which is a cross of Della Reese by rock and roll. His protege, Christian Bedard, has carried on the breeding, and here is one that's credited to them both. We have City of San Francisco by Baby Love by Unknown, so we don't know what the unknown is, but I'm sure it's a striped rose and has something to do with pinstripe. And you'll see Frida Kahlo, a magnificent floribunda, wonderful rose. Christian took rock and roll, crossed it with Meredith, and came up with Parade Day, a fairly recent grant of flora. Tom in 2004 introduced this interesting rose, and although not really a striped rose, you'll notice the breeding is sentimental by Amalia. And I show this one because this is what happened in my own bush. This is uh, back up here. This is my bush of uh, Chihuly. You see Chihuly here? Look at this. Same bush, same. And what that is, and that actually propagates true, it's the one that I named after Jerry Mathers, the beaver. And I've had some say, well, wait a second, isn't that, just this, isn't that Chihuly? And the answer is, no, it's not Chihuly. It's different than Chihuly. And in order to confirm that, I sent them both to Tom Cruise to seek his opinion. He says, there's no question about it, that the orange is out of this, out of this one here. This is a yellow blend instead of an orange blend. If you look on Help Me Find, you'll see both of these pictures under Chihuly. Why? Because it's a sport that occurs quite often. Mm -hmm. you go back to that jumping gene. If the jumping gene shows up in one spot, you'll have one rose. And if it shows up in another spot, you'll have a different rose. Mm -hmm. And they can jump back and forth. And so the fact that you look at uh, pictures on Help Me Find, uh, what you're looking at is both the sport and the original of Chihuly. The sport in this case I've registered as Jerry Mathers. Tom was also responsible for introducing striped roses from other breeders here from Olison. We have berries and cream. And Pierre Rouard from France, you see a large climber, tropical cl lightning. It's registered as a large climber, truthfully grows more as a large shrub, but it's got a most unusual striping to it. We have other roses that are popular in commerce. I like this one a great deal. Certified roses, this rose in 2007, when there's no explanation where it came from, who bred it or anything. But as you can see, it is a magnificent striped rose. The House of Mayon introduces Grand Flora in 2008 called Old American Magic, which is a seedling by Sentimental. Mayon also has this second generation descendant of sorbet fruit, a striped Mayon climber of undisclosed breeding that they released as raspberry cream twirl. This one is a magnificent rose. I first encountered this rose in the Rose Hills Garden and had to take several pictures of it. Fired up, Mayon released this unnamed seedling by unnamed seedling. We don't know its breeding, but as you can see, it is a brilliantly striped rose. From Ciliandro, this is Michel Adam, a great breeder now from France, introduced in 2000, and Palatine Roses has been putting out several of his roses. Gareth Ryder from England, 
introduced Tawny Tiger, a russet, most unusual color on this one, very prolific, beautiful foliage, wonderful rose. Night Sky, Colin Dixon of England. Here we have Mr. JCB by Crazy For You. What's crazy for you? Well, crazy for you is what they call 4th of July in England, because England doesn't usually celebrate the 4th of July for some odd reason. We have others. Here's Ben Williams, the American hybridizer, released a rose called Orange Van Gogh, which has no released breeding. Whit Wells also Introduce other striped roses. Here's the streak, which is a miniature rose from 2010. One introduced in 2015 called striking. There it is in our garden, a nice name for it because it is in Burling Young, release school spirit, floor abundant 2012. Another stripe as you can see. And Deanna Krause, here's a hybrid of Carefree Beauty by 4th of July from the Antique Rose Emporium folks, named after a Rosarian. Deanna Krauss, Ray Ponton, bred this rose, grows mostly as a climber. Turn to my friend, Frank Benadella, who has since passed on. Frank, back in 1995, and although he's best known for his miniature roses, this was his, this was his biggest money seller for years. He bred 1995 a florist rose that was called Zebra, using Sam McGrady's Picasso and an unnamed seedling. Frank also introduced, or after was introduced after he passed away, a rose called Jersey Boy. It grows more as a climber. Turn to the hybridizer, Jim Spruill. Here's Jim Spruill with Ralph Moore. Jim did a, has done an enormous amount of work with Holthemias, Holthemia persica. There's an example of an actual Holthemia persica, which is noted for its eye. In fact, one of his earliest introductions that Jim Spruill came up with is iconic lemonade. And there's a whole series of roses now that are iconic this and iconic that or iconic various lemonades associated with various fruits and vegetables. Iconic lemonade being the first. <clears throat> but Jim also has, has uh, produced some striped roses. This is an earlier one of his. This is Roller Coaster. It's a roller coaster that he crossed with Hot Tamale and produced a miniature climber called Lifelines. More recently, he has a large climber called Red Streamer. Breeding is undisclosed. As you can see, the red on red stripe that Jim has come up with. Jim has continued his work, and basically what he's been trying to do is combine stripes with holthemias, where you can get the striped roses with the holthemia blotch in the center. Here, for example, is an unnamed seedling that uh, I asked him about. It's a sixth generation descendant of purple tiger, which comes from pinstripe. So we're back to pinstripe again, and you can see he's got a rose here that is striped. As his more recent ones, he recently posted on Facebook. Here, you can't quite see it as well, but it's got the Holthemia eye, the beautiful stripe in a single. What a spectacular rose. We hope that he will introduce this one day. Here's an example of several of them that he's posted on his Facebook site. And you can see how Jim continues to work with seedlings, attempting to produce beautiful roses that have extraordinary stripes with the Holthemia center. That brings us to the latest one. We have Dave Bang. Dave Bang, San Jose, California, has excited the American world with his striped roses. Mentored by hybridizer Jim Spruill, Dave built a four foot by eight foot seedling bench and created a greenhouse with a metal scaffolding frame for raising seedlings. There's a photograph of his seedling bench. He bought a bouquet of the Interplant Florist Rose Flash Night. This is a florist rose. This is not something that Dave bred, Flash Knight. Flash Knight is a widely known inter florist rose by Interplant. It's a Netherlands breeder. Introduced circa 2007, the breeding of Flash Knight is undisclosed. But you want to bet the pinstripe somewhere in that? And it goes back to Ferdinand Pichard. And we have Flash Knight. Well, Flash Knight 
does a very good job of passing on its stripes. He began by using black backer and black magic as seed parents to hybridize with flash knight as the pollen parent. Here's black magic, here's flash knight, and what did he get? A knight of magic, spectacular. This is a climbing mini flora. You want to grow this rose? I mean, it is as beautiful as that, I can tell you for sure, but it is also about eight feet tall. Mm. After breeding many beautiful roses, Davis' next bull was disease resistant. And one of the pivotal points in his program is when Jim Sproul gave Dave two key roses Jolene Adams, beautiful rose, beautiful many floor rose that Dave, uh, that uh, Jim Sproul introduced several years ago. And so Dave used it for his red crosses. And he has first impression for his yellow ones. And the two roses made it possible to achieve disease resistance in addition. But Dave hasn't been that forthcoming on his breeding either, so we can only speculate about several of them. But we have here a night of magic, and you can see the climbing mini flora that I've already shown to you. You see how it is as an open bloom. What a beautiful, incredible, beautiful open bloom it is. Suzanne had her in program Magical Moment, which black magic by Flash Knight and my expectation of the breeding and it also is a monster growing climbing mini flora. There's another climbing mini flora, the breeding of which is undisclosed, but I'm thinking lasting impression is probably in there. Climbing mini flora, it's so yummy. There's a flora bunda. <coughs> you know, many of Dave's roses, because you've got the florist rose in there, the florist rose is actually have a class of roses they call spray roses and the spray rose is actually a that is a mini flora rose that is and generally sold in the florist shops as a spray of roses and so flash night is would be and is classified as a mini flora so you take a mini flora and you cross it with some of these other roses which are larger roses and we have produced and they've produced a number of them that are it's coming difficult to determine whether or not they're really many floras or flora bundas based upon their size. There's one he named Laos Deo, which, by the way, translates to praise be to God. In 1888, it was engraved in the aluminum cap placed above the tip of the Washington Monument. There's Code of Honor. One of the roses that he was using was Honor. Remember the white rose honor, the white hybrid tea? So you cross honor with flash night is my speculation as to his breeding here, and he produced code of honor. Delightful. This appears to be a Jolene Adams by flash night. I'm guess again speculating because he hasn't really disclosed the breeding of this, but uh, this is a nice, beautiful mini flora. Faithfully yours. I'm thinking this is Black Backer by 4th of July. I forget why I think that. Dave did, in fact, disclose the breeding of some of his roses early on. And so I may have picked it up from there, or I may have just speculated about that. But we have Faithfully Yours, as you can see, with the creamy color. Here's Marshall, Marshmallow Bubblegum. As you can see, is a pink and cream striped. This one, a mini flora. Radiant Love. Reading of which is undisclosed. I'm growing this rose. I must say, I'm really not very impressed with this rose. I mean, he got a really, Dave took this picture here, and I have yet to see it showing form that looks like that. Uh, it is, however, a vigorous growing rose, so I'm hanging on to it for the time being. We have here strawberry kisses. This is the best of his many floras. Reading of which is undisclosed. That is an example of the rose from our garden. I took this rose in 2019 to the Desert Rose Society show, which is the last rose show of 2019 before the 2020 pandemic closed everything down and won many floor queen of show with it. And then in June of this year, when we had our sec next rose show, when we were finally able to again have rose shows again, Dr. Justin Ekuan won many floor queen of show with Strawberry Kisses. So it's two for two in the last two Southern California shows. Although it's not registered as a climbing mini flora, I must warn you that if you get this rose, it is also a very vigorous grower. 
makes wonderful sprays. You get whole sprays of roses that look just exactly like that. So, I mean, this is a spectacular rose and a great exhibition rose. Wow. Here is Surprise. Surprise, and I'm not sure why it's considered a surprise. I reviewed it in Horizon Roses as a surprisingly good rose, and it is. Here's a photograph of it from our garden. Twist and shout. Here's a mini flora. Tends to go on the tall side. You'll notice that this particular type of coloration, the coral and the yellow, is pretty common among Dave's roses. It's difficult at times to tell the difference between them. Here's Captivating, a miniature from 2020, which you'll notice the similar kind of coloration. Dottie, named after his mother, is a miniature red blend. It was introduced in 2019. Dreamsicle. You know, I grew this rose for several years, waiting for it to finally grow up. And it finally is beginning to, in fact, there's several blooms out there as we speak. Blooms that look pretty much like this photograph from Dave Bang. So it seemed to be a slow growing rose, but uh, it's now picking up speed and it looks like it's going to be a good show rose. Eureka, named after the rose. Obviously, there's another rose, the yellow floribunda. Uh, why this is called Eureka, I have no idea because it doesn't seem to me to have anything with, you know, gold, for example, in it. Uh, I'm growing this rose, but so far not terribly impressed with it because I don't see any form to it. On the other hand, this one, he is risen. This is a beautiful, beautiful rose. It's a golden yellow stripe, as you can see, and it's got really good form. The initial blooms of this are really spectacular. And I think this might be one of his better ones. Hey, Hadi. This is a photo I recently posted on Facebook. Now, Dave's photo of this will show what looks like an exhibition center. This is not an exhibition center rose. This is a purely decorative rose. But as you can see, look at that blend of colors. This is a spectacular decorative rose. Hey, Hadi. And I very much like it. Here's hot and zesty, again, that coral and yellow uh, coloration. Very difficult to tell a uh, difference between it and several others. It's a keeper fireball. I, I really like this rose. I got it as fireball several years ago, and then uh, Dave changed the name to It's a Keeper, uh, which I once, I think I reviewed in Horizon Roses uh, saying that the name's a loser. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a very nice rose, or at least it was a very nice rose for some mysterious reason. It just dropped dead in our garden. So to get it again, this was a fairly recent one in our garden, a little gemstone. And it's pretty difficult. This photo by Dave here, and you can see this very pale uh, purplish uh, lavender color uh, with the cream to it. And it really, really is a very, very nice rose. And it got form. Oddly, this form really holds for a long time. I can't tell why, because it looked from an initial perception that it lacked substance. But it is a really nice rose. Love and Passion, here's Black Magic and Flash Night again. This is pretty much undistinguishable to my mind from the Night of Magic. Powder Keg. I haven't grown this one yet. I don't believe I can get my hand on it. I like Summer Splash a lot. The petals on this are really, really got a lot of substance to them, and they hold that form. And here you get the, really the orange with the yellow, and I think this is going to be one of the better exhibition roses. This is his best miniature. This is Swirly Pop. Swirly Pop, I'm thinking is, uh, I think he used Seedless Perfume with My Flash Night. There's a photo of it in our garden. Uh, we took this to the district show in June and won miniature queen of show with it. And it's shown up in several other shows in the country and the show results so far. I think it's quite clearly his best show miniature. Swizzle is another outstanding miniature. I think, again, Sheila's perfume by Flash Knight, which, as you can see, is somewhat similar to Swirly Pop, as is Twist and Shout. Unfailing love, well, unfailing love. Dave, Dave got a beautiful photo of it here, but uh, I have yet to see anything that looks like this in our bush. Uh, it is, however, a very vigorous growing bush, so perhaps it will begin to show us something later on. But uh, there is unfailing love. And this one, I presume, is called Love and Kisses, is how you would pronounce XOXO, unless you want to call it Zozo or something like that. 
which is, uh, I haven't grown this one yet, and it remains to be seen whether or not this is going to be worthwhile. So what's the future of striped roses? There's another Jim Sproul's roses. Well, I don't know. I remember when I saw this advertisement several years ago, and I was really taken with it, being a sucker for stripes as I am. I saw a press release that said, Interflora scientists grow the world's first polka dot rose. Huh. I actually took this seriously until I looked at the date of the press release, April 1st, 2010. They did it again. Interflora's new animal print roses, the height of fashion, here's a tiger rose and a leopard rose. Press release April 1st, 2012. I haven't done it in the last nine years. I kind of wait each year to see whether or not Interflora is going to announce some kind of new striped roses, but uh, they haven't. So I have, how about the tattooed roses? Tattooed roses of the height of fashion. Suzanne showed this in her program, The Tattooed Daughter, which uh, I named after my daughter. Here's my daughter's tattoo. I had nothing to do with that, but we were visiting one day, and she was visiting in this rose. In fact, this very specimen was right there, and I said, gee, that rose looks like your tattoo. I wonder if he's got a name for it yet, and he did not. And so I called him up and said, hey, can I name this rose? He said, sure, what do you want to call it? So I came down between two choices. I could call a tattooed daughter or tattooed mom. And I reasoned from a marketing standpoint that it would be more popular to get a rose for your tattooed daughter than you would for your tattooed mom. Those of you interested in seeing the results of the current crop of striped roses, they feature swirly pop on the cover of Horizon Roses 2021. So if you haven't already received your copy, I recommend it to you. It's $9.95 at Amazon.com for your Kindle, or you can get a paperback edition. It's a pretty high quality paperback edition, I might add. It looks a little pricey at $42.95, but the quality of the paper and the photographs is excellent. And my last picture here is, this is our striped rose garden, which are all striped roses in here. The photograph doesn't do it justice. Maybe I'll have a better one next spring, but that will show you what we've done with a lot of striped roses in our striped rose garden. And that is the end. Thank you, Bob. Does anybody have any questions for Bob while we're here? What, um, where did you say we could get the book at 9.95? I'm sorry, I did not get that question. So you said we could get your Horizon Roses for $9.95, where? Uh, you get it at Amazon, amazon.com. Oh, okay. All right. I love the program. It was fabulous. Uh, Bob, this is Stu Dalton, and I also thought it was fabulous, and you explained the mystery, because I have Memphis music, and I thought, why isn't it typical? Why isn't it typical? You explained it. It's uh, atypical, and I just don't have very many stripes. I kept waiting for the stripes. I do have a few, but not very many. Story about Chihuly, because uh, Chihuly comes in stripes or in just um, variegated. So, I mean, it's, it's unusual. Yes, I had I had the same experience with Chihuly and also with um, Memphis Music, uh, Memphis Magic. Uh, I had some uh, some bushes that had both uh, both roses on it, and yeah. uh, I gave uh, some of these bushes to the board members several years ago uh, at an installation uh, program that I gave. Uh, with Will sent me the, the, the roses, and uh, anyway, I gave them away to the board members of Sierra Fruit Hills Rose Society. Yeah, I, I have a photo somewhere in my file of, a, of, a, of my hocus pocus bush, and it shows four different variations on the same bush at the same time. 
And in fact, if you recall the opening picture I had of this program, uh, which is um, uh, was a, an Alakazam bush, and you'll see all kinds of variations of it. So the sports, I mean, it's it will uh, it will produce different sports on the same bush at the same time. And the curious thing about it, which I probably ought to mention here, if you grow any of these roses, if you grow, for example, um, uh, Simsalabim or Alakazam. You notice from time to time you'll get a pure yellow rose, which is you know right right back to Frisco as a matter of fact. And if you don't, what you need to do when you see get that yellow rose on there is cut it off of there immediately, right down to the stem. I don't know why, but I was told this that if you don't cut it off, the whole darn rose will revert back, and you'll have nothing but a yellow rose again. And why it would do that, I have no botanical explanation. And in fact, when I was first told that, I thought that was simply an old wives type tale until it in fact occurred. And I had one and I didn't cut it off and the whole darn rose reverted back. And when I was reading uh, Prince's first discussion of uh, the Rosa Monday in 1846, he pointed out that in fact, that not only does Rosa Monday revert back, but if you just you know, have a whole bed of them, he says the, the plant they'll all revert back. So I, I have no idea why that would be botanically, but uh, if uh, you get solid roses or you get reversions of your roses on striped roses, get rid of those reversions or you may lose your striped rose. I had the same experience with uh, pink intuition. I had, uh, uh, I had a, a some a branch that came out or a kink that came out without any stripes and eventually i lost all the stripes on the rose it's all you know just a pink rose now wow yeah i see a hand up go ahead unmute i'm wondering where we can get the roses that uh that dave bang has bred or that you have bred bob where are they available from? Well, Bob, did you hear the question? There was a question for you. Where can we obtain um, Dave Bang's roses and Robert Martin roses? They're hybridized. The you can Bang find Dave Bang roses at K M Nursery. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We I'm have sorry. Dave Bang on, so he's answering. Oh, hi, Dave. Welcome. Hello. So you can acquire uh, most of those photos, most of those roses through k and Nursery in Mississippi. All right. Thank you very much. And what about Robert Martin's roses? Which ones? I don't know, whatever he, one he wanted. Well, like Alakazam. Uh, Swarty Pop. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a hit and miss. I haven't really set up a deal with, uh, with K&M in, in terms of distributing it. The problem with, the, with Alakazam, almost like with a lot of the striped roses, is you get real reversions. Is Storley Pop available from K&M? Yeah, I, I, don't know whether, I don't know whether Jim's got it or not, but as I say, I've had, I've had people get, you know, in fact, I've got one right now that has a reversion. And what you can get, you can get, for example, abracadabra from Palatine. And I've got an abracadabra out there right now that is totally reverted to Black Beauty. All right. Thank you. Hey, Dave Bang, now that you're here, would you like to comment on some of your roses? Well, I can answer some questions. Oh, buy them. <laughs> I love them all. They're all gorgeous. Yeah, so I believe Swirly Pop is available at k and That would be cool. This is Diane. I bought it there last spring. So that's where I got it from.
Well, there's a, I, I might add also that there's a video, I believe it's on the American Rose Society Facebook site, which is a video of Dave's roses that uh, he showed at the National Convention in Milwaukee. And if you haven't seen that, it's, it's a very enjoyable video that shows uh, photographs taken by Dave of uh, most, if not all of his roses. So I don't know about Facebook, but I do know that it's on YouTube. Yep, it's on both. Oh, okay. <laughs>